115 years, this brick church has endured through fire and storm and decay. A sign to us of the whole church that will never fall. Yet this building didn't build itself, repair itself, or fill itself with God. When I began here as pastor, someone told me what is now one of my favorite stories of all time, a story about how this church was built. In 1907, the bricks for this church were brought by train and dropped off by the tracks. All that left was to move several tons of bricks from there to here. Well, in those days, St. Joseph's School is still right by the tracks. So the sisters told each child every day to go over, pick up a brick, and carry it here after school. And so they did. And I'm reminded of this story every time I read this passage from St. Peter in our second reading. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. To be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That is what we are doing when we baptize your children, when they receive their first communion today, when they are confirmed, when they are married or ordained or consecrated into whatever vocation they have received from God. It is not the bricks that the children carried that made this church. And if I thought of it, I would have made them carry those bricks in this morning. But I didn't realize till just now I could have done that. No, it's really not the bricks. It's their hearts that built the church. It is your hearts, your souls, your very selves that are building this church right now. Or failing to build it. Being human like we are, we're constantly bombarded by desires and needs and limitations in this fallen world. It's easy for us to become myopic, to be too focused and narrow our gaze and miss what's really there, like the apostles, Thomas and Philip. Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Master, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Just as people all too often limit the meaning of the word church to the building, so the apostles limited the meaning of the word way to a physical road, the Father to something separate from Jesus. And it's hard to blame them. The Trinity is a profound mystery, and most of their experience of Jesus has been quite literally following him up and down the roads of Galilee. But Jesus calls them to a higher vision nonetheless. I am the way. Do you not believe that the Father is in me? These new concepts, this deeper spiritual theology, isn't coming out of nowhere. Jesus already set the tone. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. I am going to prepare a place for you. I will take you to myself that where I am you also may be. At the heart of all of this is a single profound concept. We follow the thread of dwelling places where I am, the Father is in me. And they're woven into the single tapestry of God's presence. It's what we celebrate this day in three different ways. The crowning of Mary, honoring her who literally carried God's presence in her womb. Our parish picnic, where our community is assembled simply for the sake of being together, rejoicing in one another's presence. More than a collection of individuals, we are a church. And being together is the presence of God in this town. Above all else, we celebrate that presence. We make that presence through the Eucharist given for the first time to these little ones receiving communion today. Yes, God is present everywhere, and Jesus is God. We can always reach him in faith and prayer when and wherever we are. But Jesus is also 
human. He, like us, has a body and a soul. Jesus' divinity is everywhere, but his body, blood, and soul are not. And when we celebrate Mass, he's not just present in a general way, he is made present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Remember, children? Let's repeat that after me. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. Great. This presence is why so many people can tell you that a Catholic church feels different inside than another church. It is because of the Eucharist. Jesus not only comes to us body, blood, soul, and divinity at Mass, he dwells with us. He stays here as long as the Eucharist is here on the altar or in the tabernacle. Let yourself be built into a spiritual house, St. Peter tells us. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, Jesus tells us. Yes, this beautiful brick church is God's dwelling place. But the point of getting you here into God's presence is to get God's presence into you. When Jesus says he goes to prepare a dwelling place for us, he really means that he's going in order to make us into the dwelling place of God. He tells us that he is the way. And this doesn't mean that we walk on Jesus. No, his presence is the way. The way to heaven is to be in his presence until his presence is in you. Reading scripture is necessary, but not enough. Prayer, necessary, but not enough. Watching mass on TV or the internet, not enough. You need the presence. And that presence is active. He is always present in the Eucharist, but it's only during Mass that we get the full effect of that. St. Peter tells us to offer spiritual sacrifices in the temple that we build with ourselves. During Mass, we not only make Jesus present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, we also make his sacrifice present, connected to the crucifixion that sets us free from sin. Jesus tells us, no one comes to the Father except through me. To put this bluntly, literally, nothing in your life matters at all if it is not connected to the cross of Jesus Christ. The opposite is also true. Everything in your life, except sin, can be good and matter if you connect it to the Father through the cross of Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? You bring it to Mass. As the children of 115 years ago brought one brick at a time to this very spot, you must bring your life one day, one week at a time to this very spot. When I place bread and wine upon the altar, when I say to you, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable, what is your sacrifice? I put the bread and the wine. What did you put there? I hope it is yourself. That you put your heart every moment of your life from the last time you were at Mass until now. Place your money in the basket, yes. But don't forget that it's infinitely more important to put your heart upon the altar. You might not have money to offer, but you can always offer your heart. Your tithe might be an automatic draft, but your heart can't be. Each time, place your brick, your living stone, your heart and your life, your body and soul upon this altar. Children, take our hearts right now. Take our hearts, do this, all right? And we're gonna put it on the altar, okay? Good, what we're doing every time that we come to Mass. And make your heart more ready for that by going to confession first, clearing away those obstacles so that your offering is pure. And then when the bread and the wine are transformed, changed into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, you will be changed. One week at a time, 
one communion at a time, you will become more and more the dwelling place of God until that day when everything else falls away, when all that is left is life itself. Heaven come to earth, earth overcome by heaven, until all that is left is love. <laughs>